the entrance to the Sumstek or three-story temple is delicately carved in the Kashmiri style. Figures are framed in architectural forms as seen in the temples of Kashmir since the 8th century. A special feature of the temples of Ladakh of this period are colossal figures of bodhisattvas. These are made of the local mud and stand two stories high. The dhoti of the 18-foot-high Avalokiteshvara statue in the Sumstek is covered with fine paintings. These are the richest visual record of the culture of Kashmir of that period. Buddhist and Brahmanical shrines and deities, musicians and dancers, and princes hunting on horseback cover the painted surface of the dhoti. We see the continuation of the tradition of fine shading and the rendering of form of the classic Indian idiom. We also see the vitality of the more stylized medieval idiom. The influence of Persia is seen in the intricate detailing and the miniaturization. A little downstream from Alchi, on the left bank of the river Indus, we meet the path which heads towards the Mangyu village. The village is a pleasant walk of a few hours and is at an altitude of about 11,400 feet. The art of the temple complex of Mangyu is very similar to that of Alchi. The monastery of Sumda, at about 13,000 feet altitude, is the third temple complex which is supposed to have been built in the same night as Alchi and Mangyu. What makes Sumda remarkable is the almost entirely preserved Vajradhatu mandala made out of clay. Thirty-seven figures create an ordered universe. Flying figures bear offerings for the deities who represent our inner qualities. There is a joy which pervades this world of purity and graceful form. The experience of joy lies at the heart of the Buddhism which came to the Trans Himalaya during the Second Diffusion. The concept of yoga stresses the oneness of everything in creation. This art, permeated with a sublime sense of grace, brings the worshipper closer to that ecstatic realization. <laughs> 